I love when the Lord moves like that. A special touch. A refreshing. I don't know about you, but I've been tired. And I needed a special touch this morning. The message that the Lord gave me is from 1 Samuel 28, 1. 1 Samuel 28, 1 and 2. The message that the Lord gave me is entitled, My Bodyguard for Life. My Bodyguard for Life. And it came to pass in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare. I swear Pastor Matt comes up here every time on his spiel in the beginning and preaches exactly. I feel like some of us, I don't even need to come up here. Because he says exactly what I'm going to say. And I love that because I know that the Spirit of God is moving and speaking. But he said it's about warfare. We're in a war. And in this these verses and in this chapter, we're going to see that the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare to fight Israel. In case you didn't know, in the Bible, you are represented as Israel, as a believer. So the Philistines came together for what? Warfare. The enemy is playing for keeps. Yes. I had a client of mine, and I might be getting ahead of myself, but that's okay. I had a client of mine as I was training him. He's a minister somewhere else. And he said, one of the people in his congregation had said, it's okay to be friends with the devil. I said, where is that in scripture? And he didn't agree with that, but he was asking me, we were going back and forth about some scripture that would combat that mindset. And I just want to say this. That's a mindset in the church. That we can have fellowship. That light can have fellowship with darkness. But that's not what my Bible says. Amen. My Bible says that light shall not yes. have communion nor partner. Nor fellowship with darkness. My Bible also says that light shall overcome darkness. My Bible also says that in the end, Satan shall be tossed into the lake of fire. So I don't see how a believer should have anything to do with Satan nor his ways nor find ourselves friendly Amen. with that thought process. Amen. Help us. Amen. But in this story, we see King David making an alliance with the Philistines. So we're going to continue on. Just keep that thought process in mind. To fight Israel. And as she said unto David, Know you assuredly that you shall go out with me to battle, you and your men. Verse 2. And David said to Ashish, am I saying that properly? Anyone? Scholars? Sounds good to you? All right. Surely you shall know that your servant can do. And as she said to David, therefore, will I make thee keeper of mine head forever. And then another version says, very well, I will make you my bodyguard for life. As she saw something in David, the power of God and the grace of God moving in his life, that he wanted him to be close to him. And I just for a moment... Elijah, if you would come on up here, please. Oh. King David, <laughs> right here, <laughs> was anointed king at 13 years old. How old are you, Elijah? 11. So in two more years, David would have been anointed to be king. But remember, there's the call of God and the promise of God, which God had anointed David to be called king. But then there's the process from the promise 
that Jesus was day. Come here, Pastor Man. I want you to stand right in front of Elijah as his bodyguard. That Jesus was David's bodyguard, and I don't just mean physical body, I mean of his mind, of his heart, of his spirit, and of his physical being all the days of his life. So when anything that came to David that was coming against King David, Jesus was there to block it. Pastor Matt, if you would walk and Elijah, if you would follow him, stay close, hold on to his shirt, stay close, stay close, stay close. So wherever Jesus went, David went, wherever Jesus did, David did, whatever was going on in King David's life, Jesus was always there to stop it. But then, Pastor Matt, I want you to come forward a little bit. Elijah, stop. Stop. If we allow space between us and the Lord, we allow sin to come into our lives, can the Lord protect him in the way that he wants to protect him right now? Why? Because he allowed a space to become between him and the Lord. But the Lord will allow that to get his attention. Run. Run to him. Run. To get him to move closer to the Lord. Sin will cause a separation between us and the Lord. And the Bible says that the Lord will give us over to our own devices in hopes that we would repent, change directions, and come back to him. And we're going to see that in this story. Thank you, Elijah. Thank you, Pastor Matt. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. I thank you. <laughs> First Samuel. The outline of this, I'm going to go through this super quick, but these are a couple things I wanted to discuss with you today. One is warfare. Warfare. The second thing is don't, hear me, don't mistake God's mercy and grace as an approval for where we're at. Amen. Let me say that again. If maybe we have been going in the wrong direction, as in this story, King David was. And King David in this story was prospering. But we cannot mistake God's mercy and grace upon our lives as his approval for where we are at. We need to check our hearts. God, am I going the right way? God, is this right? Is that right? I'm not in your heart. I don't want to be in your heart. I got enough junk in my own heart. Yes, yes. God, am I, am I thinking the right way? God, am I seeking the right things? Yes. God, am I going in the right direction? Yes. God, am I, am, I, am I treating others the right way? God, am I being an example before my workplace? Before my business, before my family, before my friends. God, because you know what? David's men was wa were watching David. Right. David. David's call was never revoked. It was always there. But David made some mistakes. But he was a man after God's own heart. And you know why? Because David continued to seek the face of God despite his failures. Yes. He said, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. That was the heart of David, and that should be the heartbeat of the church today. In the midst of the war, in the midst of the battle, in the midst of the fight, 
in the midst of the failures, in the midst of the mistakes, of the midst of our ignorance. Yeah. What do you mean I'm ignorant, Angela? <laughs> there are so many things that I have done as a Christian that were birthed out of ignorance. Mm. And you know why? Maybe because I wasn't sitting with the Lord the way that I should have. Maybe I wasn't waiting. I put it all on me. Maybe I wasn't waiting in his presence to hear his direction. Maybe I got ahead of him or, or didn't align it with his word. Or maybe I pushed away the convicting power of the Holy Ghost. I said, oh, that's not the Lord. How many times have we done that? Don't raise your hand. Let us not mistake God's mercy and grace for approval of where we're at. Let's check that we're going in the right direction. You know, the Lord is faithful. He'll confirm Amen. what he needs to confirm. And he'll shut what he needs to shut. You know how many times, I just put myself out there. You know how many times I dated the wrong person? And I don't. <laughs> Pastor Matt. And I would pray these prayers. Because I was sincere. God, if you don't want it, shut the door. And you know what he would do? He'd shut the door. And I'd be mad he shut the door. And I would throw a tantrum. And then I would get back up and say, okay, God, you have better for me. And thank God for that, that I waited. I'm getting married in two weeks. To a godly man. Praise God. Thank God for it. I'm glad I waited. But I'm saying all that to say this. In this story, in the end, David, as she kicks David to the curb, he says, you're a man of God. I don't want you in my camp. <laughs> but how many times have you been in a friend group and the anointing and the presence of God is all over you, even if you're doing the wrong thing? Because God has his hand on you. And all of a sudden, that friends don't want to hang out with you no more for some reason. That's because the presence of God is dealing. They might not even know it. Amen. That's good. I actually dated somebody some one time that said, the hand of God is upon you, and I gotta go. <laughs> he he didn't even, he didn't even like follow the Lord to the degree that I did. So I wouldn't even expect something like that to come out of his mouth. And he said, the hand of God is upon you, and I've got to go. That was the last time I ever seen him. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. If you look for a job, if you thought you were supposed to have that job, and for some reason the job didn't happen, well, maybe God wants to push you at another job. Amen. A better job. Amen. A job. Yes. And where he can bring you up in a second in command. Amen. Amen. And he can bless you and mold and use you. Yeah. You are a leader in the kingdom of God. Look, I'm telling you, the people of God are called into leadership positions. And I'm not just because we're great, because we're not great. Yeah. He's great. Amen. And he wants to use us. You know why he does that? To put us in a position to glorify him so yes. others can know about him. Amen. Yes. See, it's all here in the outline of 1 Samuel. He talks about God gives his people an example of dedicated leadership. David is a leader. There's two leaders in this story. One was Saul and one was David. And David was a dedicated leader with some flaws. Am I talking to anybody in here? Yeah. Yeah. One, what does a dedicated leader, leader look like? One who worships the sacrifice. Thank you. What does that mean? I put Christ first in all that I do, and I do the best that I can to do that. Thank you, and I'm not just speaking about me, I'm talking about us as a whole. Yeah. That's what a dedicated leader looks like. You worship the sacrifice. Hebrews 12, 2 says this. Worship of the sacrifice. Looking unto Jesus. The author and the finisher of my faith. He's the one. He's the author of your faith. Yeah. 
Yeah. He's the one that begins it. Yes. I love that. I love, oh, you should just have more faith. <laughs> just have more faith. The Lord is the one that all, is the author of your faith. Yes. You can't just muster up more right. faith. Right, right. The Lord, when you sit with him and learn him and you watch him move, produces that faith in you. Right. He's the author of your faith. And he's the completer of it, too. He's the one that completes it. So worship of the sacrifice. What else does a dedicated late leader look like? One who faithfully seeks God rather than self. <clears throat> one who seeks God rather than self. I fail at that a lot. I see that a lot. Even in my friendship with Naya. I could be selfish. And if any of you look in the mirror, well, you could be too. Right, right. And God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, all thy soul, all thy strength, and love thy neighbor as thy self. So you know what I do to kind of like line myself up sometimes or allow the Holy Ghost to line me up? <laughs> Let me say it that way. Would I want someone to speak to me the way I just spoke to so and so? Mm -hmm. That's good. Self. So, yeah. Would I want someone to treat me the way I just treated so and so? It could be a cashier. Right. It, it could be anyone. It could be somebody at a gas station, somebody you just walk by. It could be somebody in the church. Would I want my body language? Come on, we know body language. I'm from New Jersey. We know all about body language. Body language will tell you a lot. Mm -hmm. A little rolling of the eyes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, a little turning of the head. Swing of the hair. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how about when you let the door fall behind you? You know somebody was there. <laughs> Would I want that done to me? Yeah. And then I ask myself this. Going to be a stepmother of Jeff's children. You know how I line it up sometimes too? Would I want someone to treat them that way? And that really is convicting. So, are we seeking God? And are we loving other, others as ourselves? Or are we seeking self? So, faithful. Faithful to seek God rather than seek self. That means a constant, continuous pursuing of God, a knocking and asking, a seeking, and asking, a seeking, and knocking, and asking, a seeking, and knocking. Well, I get tired of doing that. Well, ask again. Ask and seek and knock. Ask and seek and knock. At Mom, how long did you pray for me? And you asked, and you seek, and you knocked, and you asked, and you seek, and you knocked, and you seen me knock down, and you asked, and you seek, and you knocked for years until she seen the promise of God fulfilled. And did you see, I want to ask you this, Mom. Did you see this coming? <laughs> when I was under the boardwalk, could you see this coming? My Lord, my Lord. When I when I was on heroin, could you see this coming? Oh, no, look, I want to, if I can, my mom always says, I say, can I be wrong? But that's the truth. <laughs> ask, seek, knock. Nothing is out of reach of God. Right. Nothing, right. nothing, nothing, nothing. Shame is a testimony. If I can just give God glory real quick, the Lord raised up Shane from the deathbed in Jesus' name. He is a living, breathing testimony of asking and seeking and knocking. Asking and seeking and knocking. God ain't done with shame. He has a call. A dedicated leader look like a mouthpiece to point people towards righteousness by the word of God who faithfully continues to deliver the word of God. Are we doing that on a daily basis? Well, I'm allowed, look, I want the Lord to ruffle our feathers today. I don't want to stay stuck. I want to know, Lord, am I pointing people towards righteousness? Look, we 
God and pray that our Father, who art in heaven, you know, we can really put him on a show. But what does our life, the other 23 hours in the day, look like? Yeah. Are we pointing people towards righteousness and the word of God with our actions, with our lifestyle? Are we walking? Look, I'm not talking about perfection, so please don't walk out of here feeling completely condemned because no one is perfect, no, not one of us. But what I'm saying is God is in the business of changing people. He is in the changing business. He wants. He doesn't want to leave us the same. Second Timothy one nine says, "Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, Thank you, Lord. a holy calling, meaning that it's sacred, that you're going to be consecrated, that you're going to be separated, that you're going to be made pure, that you're going to be made morally blameless." Thank you, Lord. And you could be like, well, I blew it last night. What about morally blameless? Did I? No. It's a continuous process in trusting in the sacrifice, looking unto Jesus, trusting in the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm the, I, I can't see it. I can't see myself being a leader. Trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. Allow him to separate you from the things of this world. He is a teacher. Yes. We gotta learn some lessons. Yes. Thank Gabby. You. Gabby is a smart little cookie. Right. And she said, I said, we were talking about the Lord and we were talking about him testing us. And she said, Miss Angela, life is a test. Amen. I said, girl, I could have said it better myself. That's right. Life is the test. Yeah, yeah. And the Lord is a teacher. Why am I going through this, oh God? Maybe he's trying to uproot something out of our hearts to get us, to propel us to the place where we need to be. And that's what was going on with King David. He was in a war. He was in a battle. He was not only in a, in a war outwardly, but there was a raging war within his members because he was being chased.
suffered consequences right. to those actions. One of those, he lost his first baby. Sin always causes death. Yes, it does. So maybe in the outwardly, we might not be seeing the consequence on the outward, but what is it doing to our spirit, man? Yeah. Is our spirit alive? One of the qualities of a leadership role would be not to worship any other gods. The Bible says this, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt make no other graven image. That means a carved image, something you created yourself. I ask myself this a lot. Am I creating my own life or am I allowing God to create it? Am I going my own way? Am I carving an image in what I think I should be? Where I think I should go? Who I think I should be around? Or am I allowing God to pick everything in my life and saying, and you can be like, Angela, that's really extreme. Well, you know what? I've made a lot of stupid decisions. Right. Help us. Yeah. And he knows what's best as a good father. I call my stepdad all the time. Can you tell me how to do this? Can you tell me how to do that? Hey, can you help me with this? Hey, can you help me with that? It should be the same as with the Lord. Amen. God. That's right. Yeah. God, can you help me with this? Yeah. I, I called him out there. I said, I really don't know how to do this. You think you could look this over? Could you think you could see more than I could see? And he did. Yeah. He knew more than I knew. Thank God. <laughs> and I can handle the circumstance better now. Amen. And that's what the Lord wants. He wants us to go to him as a good father and say, okay, Lord. I can't see it. I don't understand it. I don't know what to do. But Lord, will you show me? Yeah. And if you ask him, he will. But guess what? Sometimes we don't want to see it. Because right. you know what? Sometimes we want to do our own thing. Come on, Lord, help me. Yeah. And go our own way, which actually would be a carved mm. image. Mm. Mm. That's good. See, we can take the Old Testament and throw it out. I love the Old Testament. Be, but thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Yes. Hey, and now, the uh, last thing about leadership is they stand before God. Meaning, they are in the presence of God. The Bible says this. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest of holies by the blood of Jesus Christ. With men and women of God that spend You can go into the presence of God, but I didn't know. You can go into the presence of God based on the blood of Jesus Christ, but I mess up. No, you can go into the presence of God by the blood of Jesus Christ, but you don't understand. I'm really struck. No, you can go into the presence of God by the blood of Jesus Christ, but I did it this morning. No, but you can go into the presence of God by the blood of Jesus Christ. You want to know why? Only the presence That's what the Bible says about our hearts. Yes, our hearts, our hearts are deceitfully yes. wicked above all things. Yes. Who can know them? My Lord. Help us. Paul said, who can save me from this body of death, O oh Lord? Oh, thank you. Only Jesus thank Christ, you, Jesus. our Lord. Hallelujah. God, help us to see the truth. Yes. Help us to see the truth. But you know what we see continued in the book of, of 1 Samuel? So we see for the through the first chapters, we see God laying out leadership. This is what leadership should look like. This is what godly leadership should look like. This is what the church should look like. But the church should find itself compromising. That's right. Find itself allowing things into their life that the word of God says you shall not. And they ask themselves, they ask for a king. They need a king. We want a king. And God is wanting to be their king. Yes. Christ is wanting to be your king. Amen. He is wanting to be my king. He is not just a ticket to heaven. He Amen. wants to be the Lord of our lives. When we got saved, you just didn't get
get a free ride to heaven. Thank he you. said, I have bought you with a price, with yes. the blood of Jesus Christ. Now you are mine. I have marked you for such a time Hallelujah. as this. I have marked you to be empowered by my spirit. He didn't just put his spirit in you as a down payment so you can lock him up in a way. Yes. He put his spirit in you to work through you. You have the kingdom of God inside of you. Hallelujah. That's so good. You have the Lord himself. The one who created the heavens and the earth inside of you. Yes, he said, I will give you a new spirit. I will put my spirit in you. Yes, Lord. And I will give you a heart, a new heart, a heart that responds to me. Yeah. Because that heart that you used to have was cold and dead and did not respond to God and did not want the things Thank of God. Yeah. I don't know how many times my mom walked in and said, I want to tell you about Jesus and this this." I mean, it was like nails on a chalkboard. Mm -hmm. This anger just rose up inside of me before I was saved. And I was like, I don't want to know about your Jesus. That's right. Because the convicting power of the Holy Ghost was trying to get my attention. And I was so cold and so angry that I just shut it off, shut it off, shut it off. And you know how I did that with bitterness? Right. Bitterness and anger. Just closing off the invitation of the Holy Ghost into my heart, into my life. But the Lord said he gives us a new heart. A heart that is pliable. A heart that can be changed. A heart that can be moved by emotion. Let me tell you something. When I was on drugs, I had no emotion whatsoever. Maybe one, anger. And when I began to feel again. And the Lord began to allow me to feel. And I know. I mean, usually that's why we do drugs is because we don't want to feel, or other things, whatever we participate in. But God wants us to travel through those things and allow Him to heal those things, not make an alliance with those things again. Not make an alliance, an agreement, a partnership with the things of this world. Look, there's a line that Jesus draws in the sand. There is no one foot on one side of the fence and one foot on the other. He says, if you are lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. <clears throat> That's harsh. That's what the word of God says. Amen. That's right. The word of God says that one day some will stand before him and he said, he will say, I never knew you. Help us, Lord. He said, I, but I prophesied in your name. But I, but I gave tithes in your name. But I never knew you. Help us, Lord. You were just going through the motions. Mm -hmm. But I never knew you. You know, do not mistake the gift and the anointing of the gift. For a relationship with Jesus. Because a gift is just a gift. Right, right. A gift is given. Yeah. But your relationship is what he wants you to have. Yeah. And a relationship is what changes our character. On, because we got some character flaws. Right, right. And one of the things that David had was a character flaw to, to allow him.
He made an alliance. He made an alliance. I want to say this. King Saul, so the people, the people asked for a king. They didn't get King David first. So King David was already anointed to be king. But then came Saul. The people got what they wanted. Have you ever wanted something so bad and you don't listen to the Lord and you end up getting it? Yeah. And it is nothing like you thought it was going to be. And it's not fulfilling. And it actually only produces death yeah. in our life. You know why? Because it wasn't from God. That's right. The only thing that is going to get us to where we need to be is God bringing us there. Amen. Well, I don't like that friend. Maybe God brought that friend into your life to help. <laughs> well, she rubs me the wrong way. Hmm. Maybe we need to figure out, is, are they speaking truth? That's right. right. That's good. Are their lives convicting? My friend, my friend Danielle said something to me on the phone the other day. And I turned around and I said, Naya, you know what? Danielle's right. I stand convicted. She goes, yeah. I said, okay, I receive. I receive it. Amen. I receive it. But sometimes we can't do that. I don't always do that that way, by the way. <laughs> but sometimes we need others yeah. to speak, to live. Sometimes somebody's life will just convict you. They don't even got to say anything. You're just watching them live. There's been times that I have been cold in my walk. Not cold. We have cold, I guess you could say. Just not seeking the Lord the way that I should have been. And I'll come home, and I is playing on the piano in the living room. And as soon as I walk in the door, I've been busting my butt all day working, building my business. Come on, anybody ever get busy? Come on. I'm the only one that gets real busy in here. <laughs> All right, I'll take it. <laughs> but busy and life just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes. And you look up and you're like, man, I haven't, saw, I haven't really sat sat with the Lord. You know, I didn't bid them flybys. But I haven't sat sat with the Lord in a while. And then here, here we come, Naya. <laughs> up in the third heaven. <laughs> And I walk in and the presence of God is just in the house. And I literally, in my heart, I'm like, oh, I want that. I want that. I want that. God, I want that. And I look, I put myself out there a lot because I want you to know that it is not all roses and, you know, floating on clouds. And I come up here and God gifts me with the anointing to preach the truth. But I be walking through. We go through some things. And praise God, his grace changes us and allows us. Amen. But you know what? I've been David. I, and you, I don't know about you. I would bet to say that everybody in here has probably done this. Been like David. Allowed the battle of whatever they were facing to not drive them to trust the Lord, but drive them to go in whatever other direction they've chose to go. Maybe because it was easier. Maybe because it was just there. Maybe because it's a character flaw. It doesn't matter why, but God is trying to get us to move in his direction. So King Saul, King Saul was the first king and he was rejected by God after a while because he disobeyed God. I want to say this. He was told to go in and destroy the Amalekites and all their animals and he spared the king. God does not want us to spare anything from our past. He does not want us to spare anything from the world. He wants everything Every action, every mindset, every idea, every agenda, every plan, every crossword, every 
Our will, our will is, our thinking is. What do you mean I need to think differently? Maybe. Lord help us. Choices that we make. Self. All in the soul and the heart. And the Lord said, I will give you a new spirit. So now his spirit, through circumstances and situations that arise, see, Satan is on the outside. The world is on the outside, pressing against you yep. to go their way. And the heart and all this junk in here is pressing on the inside to still get you to go your own way. That's right, that's right. And the Holy Ghost is saying, no, I want to break through and manifest my kingdom outwardly through you. But how does he do that? Through tests, through circumstances, through trials. Through that person hucking their horn at you and giving you the middle finger on the way to church. <laughs> and how will you react? Old man, honk at him, give him the finger back. <gasps> New man, don't do anything. Why don't you pray for them? You don't know what they're going through. Sometimes that's what the Lord tells me. Because I'll be mad at some things. He says, Angela, pray for them. You don't know what their life is like. Right. You don't know what they're going through. But that takes a relationship with the Holy Ghost to want to hear that. Well, this person crossed me. Now I want to hold on to anger. And the Lord is saying, but my spirit wants you to forgive. Amen. So he wants to break through that emotion of anger to extend his forgiveness to someone else through you. Thank you but that does not feel good. Right. That's right. I know that. That's right. But it's easier. And then he'll give you another test that's harder. Amen. Well, memories. Let's talk about memories. You will have memories of your past. And a lot of times the enemy will use our memories right. and replay them to tempt us, to get us to go back. But my Bible says that you shall have no power, that that should have no power over you. That the dominion and power of sin has been broken. Hallelujah. And that you are free. But I keep thinking about it. Yes. God is changing your mind. <coughs> Do you know how long, I'm not even lying. Do you know how long I thought about drugs after I got saved? And that's really just to put myself and anybody else that might be going through something. And it doesn't have to be drugs. It could be whatever your thing is. Right. And you could be replay, 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 replay. Even hurt. Yeah. Hurt, you've been hurt. Yeah. Replay, 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 replay. And the enemy tries to stay in this cycle so you cannot get out. But God's power isn't just to overcome sin. It's to overcome grief. It's to overcome depression. It's to overcome anxiety. It's to overcome hurt. It's to overcome, to make you an overcomer. So he wants to help you make the right choices and continue to break through and break through and break through. And all of a sudden, you don't look like the same person anymore. Amen. You don't walk the same way. You don't talk the same way. Amen. You don't handle the same things. I think I gave you an example about me getting my dad's keys the one day. I've destroyed my parents' cars when I was out there. And that, the other day I said, Dad, I went to go get Amy's kids for church. I said, can I, can I use your car to go get Amy's kids? He handed me the keys right away. And I was driving down the church to get the kids and I was like, what a testimony. Well, look what the God has done. Amen. God, look what the Lord has done in my life. But look, I was like David. I was like David. I could even have been like Saul. But Saul chose to continue to go in that direction. David repented. Thank you, Jesus. Who are we going to be like? Yeah. We have a 
choice. As for me and my house, we will serve you. Yeah. That's a choice. As for me and my house, we will serve you. That starts with you. As for me and my house, we will serve Thank you. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we see, we see what leadership is supposed to be like. We see what compromised leadership, what happens. God rejects that. God, light and darkness can't dwell together. Amen. God's not going to allow it. Amen. So if you want to go in the wrong direction, he's going to say, go ahead. Go ahead. And when you're ready, I'm here with open arms. But don't, like a good father, he'll always, hey, I'm still here. Hey, I'm still here. Hey, I'm still here. Hey, I'm still here. I think Shane had testified before he continued to hear, right, Shane, the voice of God. The voice of God, you continue to hear the voice of God. Thank you, Jesus. I know when, I, when I've chosen to do things on my own, I know. The Lord... What did the Lord tell you, Sabrina, through that sign? Turn around. Yeah. He kept telling Sabrina to turn around. She kept going, legitimately driving. He said, turn around. She didn't turn around. He used a casino sign that said, turn around. <laughs> a sign, big old sign, and convicted her heart. Turn around. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> the Lord can do anything. Amen. He will not leave us where we are at. And the Lord does this with David. See, but from the time he was anointed to the time of the purpose, there was trials that David had faced. And he finds himself slaying lions, slaying bears, slaying ten thousands of Philistines. Victory, victory, victory. He finds himself slaying Goliath. And David, unlike Saul, cut off the head yeah. of the giant. So I just want to leave that there because Saul allowed things to continue to dwell like King Agag in the land. He said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to destroy this, but I'm going to keep this. Yeah. Be careful what we decide to keep in our lives if God is telling you it needs to be destroyed. And on the other hand, King, King David said, I'm going to slice this giant's head off. <laughs> it's got to go right now. And he did. But then you find because, because David had so much victory that Saul got so jealous, he tried to destroy him over and over and over again. And look, when you choose to go God's way, when we choose to do the right thing, you better believe all hell is going to come against you. And we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers of darkness and wicked rulers of the air. But my neighbor, it's not your neighbor. But my pastor, it's not your pastor. But my boss, it's not your boss. Amen. It's principalities and powers of darkness that will use circumstances and accuse others to you yeah. to make you replay things in your mind to get you stuck where you cannot move forward and you choose to go back. The battle can be so fierce that we can choose to go in another direction. And David was on the run for his life. Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever felt, I am fighting for my life? I am fighting for my family. I am fighting just to take another breath, just to keep going. I am fighting. And then the day came where King David finds himself linked up with a sheesh in the wrong area, but prospering. And you know what? From this scripture, it doesn't seem like David really knew at that point that he was completely wrong. He was just trying to keep his head above water. Mm. And I think sometimes we find ourselves right. in those positions where we're just trying to survive. Yeah. But God, God will reveal himself. And he said, it came to pass in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare. 
to fight with Israel. And as she said to David, Know you assuredly that you should go out to battle with me, you and your men. And David said to Ashi, Surely you shall know what your servant can do. And she said to David, Therefore I will make you the keeper of my head forever. Very well, that means. I will keep you my bodyguard for life. It came to pass, and it came into existence, it came into being. There will be a day of reckoning. There will be a day when God is going to intervene. If we choose to go in the wrong direction or if in any circumstance and God shows up, even with King Saul, Saul stayed king after his disobedience. But in this chapter, it's the beginning of the fall of Saul. It was the beginning of the decline of the enemy. So can I say it this way? The enemy is on decline. Amen. But in this, in this. From the outward perspective, if you were to look at it, it would look like the enemy had the upper hand. Can, have you ever felt like that? Or even in this nation? Right, right. We can say it looks like the enemy is, has the upper hand. It looks like the enemy is on the rise. But just when it looks like the enemy is on the yes. rise, yes. the Lord is going to use King oh, David to Jesus is a bodyguard. 
Jesus is able to heal the leper, the paralyzed, and the blind. He is able to heal you. Jesus is a bodyguard. Jesus is able to resurrect the dead. He is able to resurrect whatever you need. <coughs> Jesus is your bodyguard. Yes. Jesus is able to cause the blind to see, the deaf to hear, and the lame to walk. Jesus is able. He is your bodyguard. Jesus is able to defeat thousands of armies and put them under your feet. Jesus is your bodyguard. Yeah. Jesus is able to cause Peter to walk on water. Is he calling you to the impossible today? Jesus is your bodyguard. Jesus is able to call fire down from heaven. He's able to call fire down for you. If you feel dead inside, let him light you on fire again. Jesus is a bodyguard. Jesus is able to save, and he is able to deliver. He is able to deliver you. Yeah. Jesus right. is your bodyguard. That is who he is, and that's who he wants to be in your life. Naya, if you would come up. Hallelujah, Jesus. If y'all would stand with me today. God, I thank you for this service. God, I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you, Lord, that you go before us, you go behind us, and that you hedge us in. God, I thank you that even when we're going in the wrong direction, like David had, you will use it to correct us and to get us to go in the right direction and to propel us into our purpose for your kingdom and for your glory. God, the call of God upon our life is without repentance. God, so I thank you for what you're going to do in this house today. I believe that you are calling us to a place of desiring to be kept. Yes. And that's my altar call today. It's not just enough that he saves us. Yes. But he wants to keep us. He wants to be your keeper. He wants to be the guard of your mind and your heart and your spirit. He wants to keep you keep you in joy and keep you in provision and keep you in love and keep you in your family in the kingdom of God. He wants to keep you. <clears throat> it's not just enough that we said yes to him once. He wants us to say yes to him every day. So if that's you today and you want the Lord to keep you and you want to commit to him, God, I commit myself to you that you would keep me. I ask you to come to the altar that Jesus would be your bodyguard for life.